Former Vice President Pence today said his old boss should not face charges based on today's select committee referral. He said that today on Where Else? Fox, and he also said this. I must say, from very early on, I've been disappointed in the partisan nature of the select committee on Capitol Hill. I mean, to have a committee that was literally appointed uh, in its entirety by the Democrat Speaker of the House mm -hmm. really violates the history and tradition of the Congress of the United States. This select committee from the very beginning has, has, has represented a kind of a, a partisan taint that I, I think it's one of the reasons why uh, so few Americans are paying much attention to what will happen today or to the results or recommendations of this committee. Keeping them honest, the former vice president there is being disingenuous at best to the extent that the select committee lacks members appointed by Kevin McCarthy. It does have two Republican members, uh, Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney. That's because Kevin McCarthy decided to withdraw members. And I could go on and on, uh, but let's talk with Olivia Troy, who served as Homeland Security and counterterrorism advisor uh, to Vice President Pence. Uh, I mean, he keeps on doing this, and it's, I, he, he's smart. He knows this is disingenuous. The, there was a move to have a bipartisan commission, like the 9-11 Commission, and McCarthy pushed back and made demands. Pelosi gave him everything, and then he said, no, I don't want it at all. Then there was a committee. He put witnesses to this on the committee, like Jim Jordan. Pelosi said, you can't put these two witnesses on, but these three you can keep on. He withdrew everybody. I mean, it's just, he, why does he do this? This is, he's defending the same folks who were yelling, hang Mike Pence. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. And it's also, honestly, it's offensive to all the people that I worked with in the Trump White House who came forward and testified. These are true believing Republicans who were all in on the administration for the most part, who were up there testifying truthfully. And also Liz Cheney, Come on, that's partisan. She is as conservative as Mike Pence. I mean, they are on the same level of that. And so I think, you know, I think he's, once again, even though Donald Trump sent an entire mob his direction and put him at great risk by the lies that he was peddling, he's still defending him. And it's, it's infuriating to me to watch this because as someone who worked for him got to know him on a personal level. And I actually believed in him and believe that he's actually a good person at heart and who really cares about this country, I think it just shows cowardice and it shows a lack of leadership. And as for someone who wants to run possibly for 2024, I don't think he's distinguishing himself in any way. He, uh, he did call Trump's actions reckless, which I guess is the, the bare minimum he could say, given the fact that his, literally his wife and daughter were put in harm's way because the president was demonizing him to the crowd. He stopped short of blaming Trump. He said, I don't know that it's criminal to take bad advice from lawyers. Uh, it is if the bad advice is they're taking is criminal advice. <laughs> it's criminally bad. Why? Because he wants to be president? Like, what is the reason? I think it's political craveness. I think that's what it is. And honestly, when I see this, though, I kind of, I kind of want to say, like, what role are you actually running for, though? Because it almost feels like he's running for vice president again to Donald Trump, because I feel like he's continuing to pander to this man who, quite frankly, his supporters want nothing to do with him. There's no benefit of this. Um, and really, it's a disservice to the country to continue to kind of behave that way and say it's reckless. It, it was more than that. It was an attempt to overturn an election where a lot of enablers came together and were part of this. And you should be, as a person who had to make a really, hopefully the right decision, and he did make the right decision to uphold the constitution, that day he was a hero, right? He made the right decision, he did his job. And I just keep, I, keep, I kept wanting him to come forward and say, hey, this is really what happened. This is where we are in the country. We need to move away from this. But yeah. he, he doesn't want to do that. And I think it's because he believes that somehow that voting block that is supporting Donald Trump is gonna come back to them. And I don't, I, I don't see that coming back to them at all. I think he's kind of pitching himself as Trumpism without Trump, um, the Trump policies without the nastiness, but I don't know that he's negotiating it correctly. Olivia Troy, thanks so much. Seriously, Olivia Troy, thanks so much. Because I'm wondering where that fire was with somebody, Alyssa, who says he, he might be running for president, right? Vice President Mike Pence. Where is this level? I mean, if somebody is saying and claiming to have you hung with your family, 
I don't understand why there isn't more rage or anger, why that person is still getting the deference. That Listen, I will always give Mike Pence credit for what he did on January 6th, but I think any you know, red-blooded American, if their family is threatened, if their life is threatened, they're gonna react. They're gonna show some emotion, some anger, and even as someone who knows him and respects Mike Pence, it's so bizarre and a little hard to see this tepid kind of, you know, criticism of him at this point in it. Yeah. Especially, just real quick, if he wants to run against Donald Trump, you have to be ready to take him on, and he's clearly not willing L to. Listen, I think if Mike Pence would have left the Capitol, gone down, and gotten a fist fight with Donald Trump in the Oval Office for putting his family at risk, I think a lot of people would say, wow, I like Mike Pence. He did what I would have done, right? Yeah, he'd be pulling They're higher. hang Mike Pence. You don't go, you go on there. The Secret Service would have had to separate me from the president at that point, right? And, and I think that people see this and say, that is a little tepid. It's a nice word to Weakness. say, right? I don't know if it's weak. Mike Pence is just, a, he's, he's just Midwest nice, but a little no, too no. Midwest I'm nice. I'm from Minnesota. I'm Midwest <laughs> nice. That's not the same thing. It really is. And, and I mean, he did the right thing. He did the right thing in the, in the annals of history. Why can't he own that? I understand people in politics not wanting to own the stupid stuff that they do and the <laughs> unlawful stuff that they do. He, he just refuses to own it sometimes. But the other thing about him, though, is much as I agree with Alyssa that he deserves a lot of credit for what he did that day, he was a hero that day, the fact of the matter is he deserves some of the blame because he had his own individual responsibility as a candidate on the ballot in 2020 to concede that election. And he should have done that, mm. you know, by the latest December 16th when the electors voted. And so he is actually partially responsible yeah, for but allowing I think, but I think they, I think they pushed back. I did think they pushed back a lot internally. Yeah, they, but he should, have, he should have said outright, we lost. Right. And I'm yes, sorry, I I'm sorry that the president declines to, to, to acknowledge that, but we lost. I, I agree with you. And I think he has to figure out who he is and what he stands for. Because if you get, it? if he, he, <laughs> I don't know. If, when you get in a Republican primary, Biden. when you get in a Republican primary, and say Donald Trump is there on the stage with you, and you know that Donald Trump has called you a name, right, to your face, something that upset Ivanka, et cetera, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna say, well, on the one hand and on the other hand? No, what you did was correct, some would even say courageous, because I'm sure he had death threats out the wazoo after that, and stick with it. Yeah. Well, remember, a little yeah. Bit, but that's not Mike Pence. But the rioters were 40 <laughs> feet away. These guys were 40 feet away. Well, the listen, Secret Service protected them. I have literally been standing with Mike Pence when he has confronted Vladimir Putin and has done it forcefully and bravely and strongly. The fact that he cannot dedicate that same level of strength in just standing up for the Constitution to the former president, it's going to be his own undoing. If he wants a political future, he needs to call a spade a spade. Donald Trump tried to overthrow the government. He's unfit for office and call him out and move Move on. Well, wait, hold on. Hold on. To I'm sorry. I'm was under, on, under section four yeah, of the 25th But I'm curious. It's never going to happen. Hold on. <laughs> I got to know. Uh, what are you saying with start, in stark contrast? In what way did he say to Putin that is so distinct here? I mean, I'm, I'm imagining him as, well, use your word, tepid. Are you saying that to Vladimir Putin, he was able to yeah, scream we were, in some we, way? We were in Singapore once, and he called him out on meddling in the election directly to his face. It was off camera. But he, mm. he has that capacity, but he's giving, he's shrinking back into his worst instinct, like he's somehow going to win the diehard MAGA, and you never will. Was that at the time when the president was saying that he believed Putin? That there wasn't any meddling in the election? Well, that's was there, therein lies the challenge of working yeah. for Donald Trump. Right, a disagreement between the two of them? And how did that, you know, how did that always get settled? There's a common Trump's thread. Uh, common thread. I like to say, look, again, Mike Pence is a, he's, and I think we all agree on this table, good, good American, good person, did the right thing on January 6th. I just wish you'd have seen a little bit more fire, a little bit more, like to, to George's point, a little more owning it and kind of coming down and saying, look, you know, we, what, before the election, we lost, let's just, let's just move forward. Um, I wish I'd have seen a little more anger. Let's not just yeah. single him out, though, because many other Republicans oh. have oh, not absolutely. said anything as well. I mean, Mike Pence is obviously the, the poster child we're talking about right now. But why, why is this strange dance happening? Why is it so difficult to have a full-throated condemnation, especially because, look, there is political baggage going mm. into yet another election season. One would think, cut the cord. Well, but you have to blame the Democrats here, right? I mean, this is this is the game that I'll blame Pence. Them. Hold on, I'll do that. This was a game that Pence was playing. <laughs> yeah, let's it's do that. the game they all play, which is, <laughs> oh, if we had only had more Republicans on the committee, well, guess what? You could have had more Republicans on the committee. And I would argue if you had had more Republicans on the committee, 
maybe you wouldn't be able to say, oh, we didn't have our point of view well, it's a, heard. Yeah, clearly, look, even, even the former president at one point in time spoke up about this point and said, like, why aren't we asking more questions? Why aren't we cross-examining people? Right. Why aren't we doing this? Yeah. And, and you, you don't get you that girl exactly because slots. you gave up those slots, right? Yeah. You could have had people on there, maybe not Jim Jordan, maybe not the people that they wanted. Thank you could you. have very smart people on there asking very tough questions. And you, you could have peeled back the onion on some of this stuff and maybe made it a little bit more balanced. I, I don't think the outcome would have been any different. I think today we'd be exactly where you are today with the January 6th commission issuing the exact same report. But you, you'd have had a little bit more bipartisanship on this whole thing.